Hi friends, I'm Marie with Living Felt coming to you live from Austin, Texas because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday and all of the magical fairies are just right off camera, right here, ready to sprinkle some magical fairy dust on your day. So thank you so much for joining us. Today we are continuing our virtual vacation series and we are going to de do another 2D postcard and this time we're going to Santorini, Greece. On my personal bucket list I can't believe I have not been there yet hopefully some of you have and can share some travel stories with us as we needle felt today and I look forward to sharing this project with you and before we do that we want to say hi to a few folks if this is your first time joining us in that magical chat window going on over there say hi and where you're from if it's your first time joining the show absolutely let us know that and watch as our beautiful friends welcome you most of the people that you see joining us hang out with us all week long in our Facebook group and it's a wonderful time to do that. Stick around till the end of the show and I'm going to give you a little um, photo slideshow of some of the works they've been sharing. Um, but you can also follow us on Instagram and all the supplies we're going to work with today are from our shop living felt. So I want to say hi to Karen Pack in California. Hey Karen and Sabine. Hey girl in South Carolina. Terry is joining us from Minneapolis. Fuang Light from Florida. It is her first show. Welcome Fuang. And as a matter of fact, Jess in Sweden, it's her first show too. Thanks for being here gals. And then we also have Cheryl O'Hagan in Mansfield and a ton of other people here. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching live, make sure that you participate in the chat window. This is an interactive hour. We're going to give an opportunity to ask questions, get them answered. Hopefully you have some tips and trips to offer too. And we always give away prizes at the end of the show to everyone who participates in the conversation. And if you're not watching live, you're watching the playback, comment down below because that is an extra chance to win more prizes. So for our project today, the fairies wanted to share with you a few things that you might want to add to your studio. But I think first up is Fairy Hannah with a very happy shout out. Welcome, Hannah. Yay! Hey everybody, how are y'all doing today? Fairy Hannah here. I just got a little thank you and love you um, shout out to Miss Cece Crum in Arizona. She sent me this lovely little needle felted cactus <laughs> earlier this week. I got it in the mail and I was very, very excited to see it. And this is a fun little card she drew too. So I just wanted to give a big virtual hug to Cece and thank you so much. It means the world to me to, to get stuff like this. It's so fun for us and we really do just love all of y'all so much and we're just happy to be here and, and be able to have such wonderful group of people that we are able to provide wool for. <laughs> so next up we've got a little bit of a newbie coming in. We've got Miss Fairy Lauren for y'all to meet. So here she is. <laughs> Hi y'all. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for having me. So not only am I new here at Living Felt, but I'm also brand new to felting. So for beginners, actually for any entry level, but we highly recommend this beautiful needle felting a monarch kit. Not only is it one absolutely beautiful, but it also teaches you how to blend fibers really well. I'm going to get a little bit closer so you guys can see that you get to blend some beautiful colors. And I can highly recommend this because it is a lot of fun. I invited a friend over and we felted on this for hours the other night. Um, so yes, Needle Felting a Monarch, great kit for beginners, great kit for anybody, and it's monarch season, so it's the perfect time to do it. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> and next, thank you guys so much for having me. Next up we have the fabulous Fairy Becca. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Fairy Becca here. So, thank you, Kayla. <laughs> so today we're going to be using our 100% wool felt fabric in an 8 inch by 12 inch sheet. If you're using a larger background for a project, we offer bigger sizes such as our 18 by 36 inch cut or our 36 by 36 inch cut. And if you're going even bigger and beyonder, we <laughs> offer a 72 inch by the yard cut, as many yards as you'd like. And we have a few select colors in stock ready to ship to you, but if there's a certain color you want, we're always happy to special order a color just for you. Yay! Thank you so much, Becca. Thank you. Up next, <laughs> up next is Fairy Ann. 
Hi friends, thank you so much for being here with us today. If working with the felt fabric isn't your bag, or if you want to try something new and different, we've got some linen fabric for you. We offer this linen fabric in a few different sizes, from a 12 inch by 14 inch size to a half yard, and da 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 da! <laughs> we even have a large yard, we can supply large yardage cuts as well. It's this beautiful oatmeal color, it's 100% linen, it's a medium weight, thin but not too thin, and it is even softened, so it's really, it, it feels really nice, it doesn't feel coarse at all. Mm -hmm. people, people are saying they love the felt and they love the linen and hi Anne and hi to all the fairies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and just so you can see the color up close, Perfect. I'll hold it a little closer for you. Nice. Beautiful. Thanks, y'all. Up next, we've got Fairy Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, everybody. I'm showing off some of our wonderful MC1 batting today since we're going to be using a lot of blues in this tutorial. I figured I'd show off our MC1 Blues Studio Pack. Now the colors that we've got right here are going to be Egyptian Blue, Blue Azul, Bluegrass, Carnival, Majestic Blue, and Dusty Blue. Now these are the colors that we have in, in this round, but they may change from round to round depending on stock. And if you're ever wondering what colors that you get in here, there is a little <laughs> paper, <laughs> very anticlimactic, a little paper that will be in every studio pack, um, the MC1s that say what color they are. And since we're taking a trip to Greece today, I'd like to ask everybody, <laughs> I know I'm starting to blush already because it's so corny. <laughs> what is a Greek, what is a Greek dog's favorite treat? What, what is, is a Greek dog's, dog's favorite, favorite treat? treat? Barklava. <laughs> oh, I love the smiley face. <laughs> been there before. Yes, he's always there. Oh, he is? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> Aren't they awesome? Those are the magic fairies of Living Felt. We are just so grateful that they are here. These are the gals that answer the phone. They're the ones who answer your emails and your customer service requests. They're the, also the gals who pack your boxes with lots of love. And you may not know, but they actually sprink sprinkle fairy dust into every single box. They have little jars of magical fairy dust that they sprinkle their love and good wishes into every order, even when people come into the store, should that resume again. So thank you all for being here. And if you're just tuning in, this is what we're doing today. We are going to needle felt a little virtual uh, vacation travel postcard of Santorini, Greece. And I'm going to share that with you. You'll want to go ahead and grab the download. Now we included a link in in the description of the video. You can also find it um, on our Facebook page. We shared links to the video so you can grab a link there. You're going to want to grab this because it has the supply list in it and it also has the reference images for today's project and I'm going to tell you a little bit about those and pop those up here. So if you're ready to get started say I'm ready and before we jump into today's project I mentioned to you comment in the chat box if you have that ability, if you have a Google account while we're live. After the show you can comment down below. We draw prizes from everyone who comments down below over the week and I have two winners from last week. You're going to win the same prizes we gave away last week and they are Jackie Sexton, if I can get that in there, Jackie Sexton and Carol Bridger. So congratulations gals. We will reach out to you about your prizes and get those on the way. So yay to them. Okay, cool. So if y'all are ready to go to Santorini, I'm going to look for your comments um, here, and those are going to come my way. So let's look today at uh, the supplies that we need for today's project. And let's look at some wool colors. So these are the MC1 colors we're going to be working with to make this cute little picture. As the gals mentioned, we are working with our 100% wool felt. And for today's project, I chose just the regular off-white. And these are a collection of blues I'm going to be working with. So I have Blue Azul, Majestic Blue, 
dusty blue, cobalt blue, midnight blue, and then these are two blends that I made. This blend right here, and I'm going to show you where that goes, is actually cobalt and blue azul. So these two guys blended together about 50-50 makes this lovely color. And then this blends right here, you see there's a slightly lighter one and a slightly darker one. I blended blue azul with white. And we have some other heathered blues. Uh, this is just cotton white actually, cotton white right here. So you can make your own blends and we also have lots of blends if you just want to jump to a blend that's already done for you. I'm also going to be working with uh, cotton white and then our CX2 white. And I'm going to try and show you those whites here in just a second. But I think if you look up close, you can see the light hitting these differently. One is really bright and one is not quite as white. So CX2 is not MC1 batting. It's different. It's more coarse, a little more brittle, but it's the brightest white that we carry. And cotton white is natural. So it may vary from slightly brighter to slightly more aged looking. I'm just going to work with a few greens. This is olive and lemongrass, um, mandarin and lemon peel, and then peachy or pale peach. This one is pale peach. These are two of very popular skin tones and peachy. Either one of those or both will work great. I have pecan here and then um, hot orange and we're going to make some blends to work on this color. The other thing you'll want perhaps is a transfer pen. Some of you know I really like the iron-on transfer pens. For today's project I actually used the brown transfer pen instead of black which we often use. So this is what brown looks like on white and I just checked with the gals we may not have brown in stock right now so I brought an orange just so you can see there are other options besides the black um, but the, it should be darker than the fabric that you're putting it on if you want it to show up. Okay, so I will, let's see, I'm going to be looking for your comments if I can get back to that spot and hopefully uh, I will be able to get those coming through here in just a moment. So thank you all so much for joining into the conversation. And I know that many of you, this is your very first time being here, so thank you so much for joining us. Okay, I see my, I got my head in the screen. That's not very good, sorry about that. Okay, y'all, so let me, um, we're just gonna get set up here. And so remember, if you're just joining, if you're just tuning in in the, in the description, you're gonna wanna go ahead and grab the download the PDF and in the PDF let me show you what you're going to get so you know what you have to work with. So let's look at that. So the, on the cover of the PDF is the basically an image of the one that I made and here's what it looks like unblocked. Then we're going to give you a supply list all the items that you need to download. And then what you're getting is uh, an image that you can do your outline on. Mine looks a little faded because I've been printing a lot and I didn't uh, upjuice my ink. But you're going to get a nice strong image. We've taken the original photograph, uh, which we have a commercial license for, to share with you all. A wonderful gentleman named Nikos in Greece granted us a license to share this with you, so I'm so grateful. But what we did is we gave it a more artistically painterly look. We softened the edges, we muted things a bit so that you could just relax and kind of catch the vibe of the picture. And then we give you a reverse of that because once you do your iron on transfer and then you turn it over onto your fabric it will be the opposite direction so you can choose whichever one best works for you they are the exact same image okay so let me get on here and i welcome your questions as we go forward thank you all so much for participating um, and so I am using, Nancy asked, I am using 100% wool felt on my background. And here it is right here. This is, the, this is the image that I made. So let me tell you a little bit of my goal for today's project in doing another uh, postcard. Today, what we want to look at is doing um, some gradations, like how do you do like a gradation in the sky, and then also some gentle shadows. Sometimes there is a tendency to go 
just to lay down a whole bunch of white in an area where you have white. There's a tendency to just lay down white and then go back and try and capture the details. But there's some subtle shading going on in here and here and here. And what I would like, and even here, we have some shadows on the sidewalk. We have some shadows here in the doorway. And I would like to take you through sort of a staged process to look at how you might get some slight variances without just filling in the whole thing with a color and then going back and trying to get that depth or that range. So I'm gonna get it, whoa, just one, just trying to find just the right pocket. So how's that for you all? And um, okay, so just quickly, if you've not seen how we, how we do this before, I'm just gonna describe it verbally because we've shown it a ton of times. What you do, what I like to do is I will, you use a hot dry iron, the hottest setting, I use the silk setting, whatever's the hottest on your iron. I iron my fabric first. You, um, you first you'll trace your image actually. So trace all the lines that are important to you. And so hopefully now you can see all those nice brown lines. I ended up skipping these guys in future ones, skipping the things sticking up um, and just added those later. Trace all these lines, iron my fabric, iron the surface that you're gonna apply it to. You turn your image upside down and then you will iron from the back and you're just gonna hold it in each spot for 20 seconds. And what you'll notice is when you can see the lines through the back of the image, you know it's transferred. But make sure you peek and lift up so that you know it transferred. And I like to give myself little corners uh, so I know where to stop my image. I also like to needle felt a little beyond those corners so that when I mat or frame my piece, I don't have any bare spots underneath there. So be willing just to let it bleed off a little bit and it looks a little, oh, you know, painterly. But then once you frame it, you'll get to, you know, nudge it whichever way you want to make it look really clean. Okay, so let me look here. <laughs> Um, and make sure, can you use specialty fiber? Sure, you could use specialty fiber if you want. I'm not going to do that today, but you could blend in um, some shiny fibers if you want and just play with that and see how you like it. And Terry wants to know, how much time do I spend blending fibers together? Terry, I'll tell you honestly, I don't spend a ton of time. I like to do some hand blends uh, just kind of find my way and then I made blends right before the show for you all with my hand cards it just took like five minutes so I find my way first by making little blends by hand and I do that just by taking equal amounts of two colors um, like a, I like to do what I call maybe like cotton ball blends so this isn't this is a little smaller than a cotton ball but I might take sort of two cotton ball amounts of two colors, blend those together like this and see how I like it. And then I, that's a 50-50 or a one-to-one -one blend. And then I decide, do I want it lighter or do I want it darker? And sometimes this blend gets blended with something else. So I do like to make up um, my blends in advance. I find that really helpful. Now before we jump into this, let me put this here for a second. I want to show you all these two whites up close and personal. I hope this, this tells the story a little bit better, just if I sit stationary. This is Cotton White MC1, and this is CX2 Bright White. It is a very popular bright white. It's great for when you, the, the utmost white, but I would say when you're doing a picture like this, that it should be not your base white, but the added white, because everything is not this bright. And um, it, I think it helps to start with something like cotton deep in the shadows, and I'll show you how we do that, and then punch this up where you think it should be bright, bright white. At least that's my recommendation. Okay, thank you for the questions. They are awesome. You are awesome, and I am ready to felt with you. Okay, so what I like to do, as I mentioned, I started with the blends, and this sky right here is cobalt and blue azul blended together right at the very top. I'm gonna scoot this guy over. And today I'm going to be working with my 
favorites. Uh, in this case, I'm going to work with a yellow. Fine. 42 triangle. I will work with a cluster of 42 triangles. That's just three uh, 42 triangles rubber banded together. Very highly technical tool. And in some cases, I'll work with a 40 triangle. So all fine needles, they keep too much wool from getting pushed to the back side and save my foam from getting torn up. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, Carrie asks, would this work well on linen? Absolutely is my answer. Yes, you can do this on linen. So here we go. I'm going to start the sky right here and use your reference image if you want. Now the reference image, uh, this printout doesn't look so great, but um, when you do the download, use your download as the reference image if you want to really punch it up and see how uh, you want to you know, put your gradations in the sky. So I'm going to start with a small band of this blue and I want it to stop right there at the building and we only want a thin layer. Thin enough that we don't see the fabric underneath and you don't have to put it all the way across. You can just start, um, you know, you can do it in little bands at a time. And I do want this to be rather narrow. So I'm going to just kind of put it where I see that I want it. And again, I'm going to go outside of my range there. So I'm going to trace right along the building line here and I can just barely see it. You just kind of want to peek under there and see where that is. And I like to tack it down right there so I know where I'm going and just cut that line in. You can always have a dark color underneath a lighter color and you don't have to needle felt it down 100% before you add the next layer on. So I'm just going to kind of get it in place. If you felt it with me before, you know I kind of work a little bit in draft mode. And if you hang out with me here for a minute when we get going on this, I have a little treat for you. So uh, Sharon says, what color was the other needle? This is yellow, and then this one is green, and that's our green 40 triangle. It's the next uh, more coarse up from the 42. Uh, Lois says, are the corner marks on the fabric or on the transfer picture? I, I put the corner marks on, on my picture. So I physically put those corner marks in there so that I could know where to stop. Okay, so now you see this can be rather thin here because we're going over another color right there. And you can just pull it and layer it where you want it. And again, we want to go all the way over here to the roof line. And you can always fill in a little bit if you need, but you don't, you don't want it to be bare. You want it to be solid all the way. Maxine says, would you be able to use burlap? You can needle felt onto burlap, and we had a project last year that we needle felted onto burlap. It was called our Boo Kitty, and that was designed by Fairy Kayla. You can needle felt onto burlap. The one thing I will tell you is be mindful of how detailed your image is when you choose burlap as your base, and that is because burlap has such large holes in it that the wool really wants to push through to the other side. So I would say it's good when you're going to put on a lot of wool and tack it onto the surface or um, if you're not doing a whole bunch of detail because you tend to lose it there. It tends to just want to push through to the other side and when you're adding a lot of detail you have to put a lot of wool on top for to achieve that. Okay, so I'm getting my sky in here, and again, I'm not going to worry about these sticky uppy bits. This is an umbrella, and then these are architectural structures. I'm not going to worry about those. I'm just going to go right over the top of those, and then we can always add those in later. And then there's this. Uh, this My water is here, and I'm going to put this island in after. I just want to get all that sky into place first. Okay. Great question, y'all. I appreciate those. Okay, so you notice that I'm, you know, just kind of not needle felting everything flat all the way, but you also could if you want to needle felt each row down 
all the way you could um, if that's how you prefer to work. This is just how I work. So sometimes there's a tendency to fill the whole sky in with just one solid color and I wanted to show you an alternate to that approach. That's a fine approach, you know, if you like, but there are other ways you could go about it and creating your own blends might be something that you would like to try. Okay. I see some of you are making friends. That's awesome. Okay, look, I'm using my cluster needles now and I'm gonna answer some of your questions. And now I'm just gonna tack this down. Um, and these needles have points or little barbs very close to the surface. The finer the needle, the, the closer, the smaller they are. But in this case, they're very close to the surface. So I'm not pushing through. I'm just tacking this all down nice and flat. Notice where the lines overlap that I'm not going against. You want to blend everything in that direction of those layers. And we can also add little bridges to make these blends a little more softened. And I will go back and do that in just a moment after I get this all laid down. Marlene says, can you advise when to stop needle felting a picture? Is it like a 3D until firm? Um, I can't seem to know when to stop the felting process. So that's a great question, Marlene. Now sometimes you might be making a, a sort of a 2D image but in relief and we are going to do at least one if not a few projects like this later this year. But for myself, my goal is for something to be needle felted enough that when I rub my hands across it, I'm not roughing it up. I'm not able, there aren't loose fibers sticking up. They're not fluffy and loose. I want that thing flat and smooth. And then I'll smooth out the final bits with an iron, but I couldn't rough it up with my finger even before I iron. So I think for myself, when I needle felt a picture like this, I want it to be flat. And if you have a fine needle, um, you, you know, you can do the whole thing, the whole thing with a fine needle and then you're just going to get less needle marks. Now, my sky here, this is kind of a, a drastic jump. So what I could do is take a little bit of this blend, which was that blend there, and a little bit more of my blue azul. And let's just add a little bit of blue to that and lighten it up so that we have a little more of a bridge right there just want to make it a little bit lighter. Oh, Kevin asked. Okay, so Kevin asked, have I ever been to Greece? So Kevin, the answer is no. Um, I, being of the age I am, some of you gals or, and or guys might remember the movie that was popular. I think it was in the 80s. It might have, it had to be the 80s, Summer Lovers, <laughs> which was cast in Santorini. So of course, as a young woman, I set my sights on going to Santorini after college. Uh, in college, in my junior year, I had two roommates from Greece, a brother and a sister. Uh, Athena, or Athena, Athena and Yuri, they were both from Athens, and I really thought I was going to go to Greece, but I met my husband, my whole life changed for the better, I must say, and I've never been, so now we do have friends in Greece, he has friends in Greece also, and um, it's back on my bucket list, there he is, <laughs> okay, it is back on my bucket list. Okay, so see how that just little addition softened that right there? That's awesome. And uh, then I'm going to, I actually, I like that bridge right there. You can soften that one just a little bit more with a little bit more blue. Look, that's my husband. <laughs> He snuck in. Y'all say hi to Rodney. He's been here doing IT. Can you? <laughs> See y'all. That was our, our ghost our ghost needle felting session. <laughs> Bye, sweetie. Thank you. Uh, funny. Okay, so I've uh, so Kevin. I've never been to Greece, but y'all stick around here in a moment. I'm going to take you on a little. We're going to have a little walk through this village in Santorini in just a moment and have a few pictures along our path. Um, Heidi says, I felt it on felt. She'd like to try felt on linen or other cloth or other materials. Are there any that work better or types that should be avoided? Great question, Heidi. So I would say, um, 
I would avoid anything that's either, um, sometimes canvas can be difficult because the, the fabric itself is too coarse and can really wear down the tips of your needles. I would avoid something um, too tightly woven for what you're doing that might have a tendency to pucker, like a cotton might tend to pucker on you. Um, and then something just too open that just wants to put, the wool just wants to push through. That can be a little more difficult. So y'all have fun with your sky there. Get it just how you want it. And my approach actually was to do the sidewalk um, next. But I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do, let's do this ocean bit. And for the ocean, I blended majestic, just a little majestic and a little blue azul but I think I'm going to do a little blue azul and a little of the blend we just made I just want the ocean to look varied I didn't fuss with it at all I didn't you know worrying about it looking necessarily real um, this is the Aegean right the Aegean Sea beautiful gorgeous I think we all should go and I'll take you on a little on a little journey here in just a moment so let's get our our ocean into place Iva Dean Anderson says, what is a relief? And by relief, Iva Dean, I mean when the surface isn't just flat, but you start to build up dimension such that if you held this picture sideways, you would see the wool sticking out. So it would be built up and be bulky in that shape. So like if you built a tree, the tree trunk might stand out. That's what I mean by relief. Um, Stormy says, can you use the green clover multi-tool on this? Stormy, that tool definitely has its sweet spots, and I would say try it out. For me, I like something a little more exact that I can control. And I want to say that here on the ocean line, you generally want a straight line across, but we're going to put our island on top of that, so I'm not really worried about it. I just don't want this too high. Um, and I want this to come all the way over to where my building is. So now for our mountain here, I just went straight, just with straight midnight blue. On your screen, it might look black, our mountain, our island. And I didn't even worry about following a particular shape. I just went for shape. So, um, you know, just try and not make it straight across or too typical but the bottom of it will be straight across the bottom of it will look fairly straight across in your image and you just want to needle felt all of this stuff flat and I will usually spend my time on each little part doing that let's look at um, let's look at this door here while we're in our blues maybe and I'll just tell you what I like to do so I have one extra line here that doesn't belong. I, I got cross-eyed for a moment, so ignore that line. The first thing I'm going to do is actually frame in between. There's a, a spot in between the two doors. And notice that you can just anchor um, the MC1 down and then do what we call drafting it out to get a nice thin line, which we've looked at before. And you want this to come straight down. I've used my green needle. It's just a little more aggressive than the 42 because it's kind of, I find it easier sometimes to use a slightly more aggressive needle to get that to come all the way down, meaning to anchor, anchor it and really push it into place. I don't want this line to be big and thick, but I want it to be really obvious. And then I want just one more going across right here. So, uh, Carrie says, sometimes it helps to save a little copy of your picture in a black and white filter to see the shadows. Yeah, Carrie, I know some people like to do that, and I've tried it. Um, for me, I personally find it a little more um, challenging, but I did purposefully um, make this picture softened, as you'll see when you guys get the download, because I think it's a little less intimidating than looking at the original photo, which is amazing. So the photographer, Nikos, is a commercial photographer, and he did a couple of beautiful images of this little village, and I don't know how to say the name of the village. It's O-A-I, O-I-A, O-I, I don't know how to say the name, um, but he did some beautiful photographs of this village, which is very colorful, and um, I really found it inspiring, but I wanted to just kind of soften it for us so we could go for more like a watercolor 
effect with our wool. Now, this one is really going to get buried under there, so I don't want it to be too thick. Um, it's going to get buried under the wool so that this particular line, this one right here, is not too strong. So I like to track this out rather than put down a whole bunch of color, but I'm using this same blend in the door. And you might decide to, you know, just use straight blue azul in the door, and I think that that would work as well. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, Faith Mother Goddess says, can I please see the back? It will help me know if I'm doing it right. So can you see how little color is actually coming through there? That's because I'm using a fine needle. I'm using fine needles and not needles, ne the needles aren't overly strong. Stormy says, do you always try to frame before filling it in? No, Stormy, I think you'll see in a minute um, that I'm not framing things, but um, what I am doing here is getting those shadows in first so that they're not sitting on top. Uh, that way you can have a little bit of wool sitting right on top of them and they, they will be softened and not look too overly strong. So it's kind of fun to have a, like a ch somewhat chunky, varied mixture when you're filling in something like a wooden door, especially a wooden door maybe that's been painted a few times rather than having one solid color. But you could do this whole thing in you know, just solid blocks of color if you wanted, and I bet it would still look just as cool. Cool. Thanks y'all for being here with me. Okay, so I'm going to keep filling in this door here, but I thought maybe you guys might want to just see a few pictures where since this is our virtual vacation, firstly, has anyone here been to Santorini, Greece? And if so, tell us one of your favorite places to go there. And I'm going to pop up here for us, if I can. I brought some... Uh, first of all, let me pull this one up for you. This is the original, this is the image that you are, I think this is the, this is the original image, um, and this is what you're going to see in your download, in the PDF with your download. And so what I brought for you is um, a little slideshow so that you can see. Let me see if I get this out and I'm going to do a quick play for you while I keep filling in my door. Here we go. Okay, so this is where we are today. We're in Santorini walking around these beautiful areas looking at all of that gorgeous stone. This lovely man playing his accordion made me so happy. Look at his shoes. <laughs> I thought maybe we could shop and buy some art and some souvenirs and some things to wear. This looks like a good place for tea, you know? Maybe a little break and a photo shoot. Can you practically feel the wind flapping that beautiful flag right there? Very famous, the churches and the windmill, which I didn't bring a picture of, but this looks like a great little walk uh, for shopping. And a nice little place to stop and have lunch Maybe while we compare our souvenirs and back to our little spot there. So I wanted to take you all on that brief little photo journey so you could feel like we actually did spend the day there in Santorini. Seems like a great place to be for the day to me. <laughs> Looks lovely. I want to put on my sandals already. Okay. You definitely want all of this stuff laying down um, and flat, and it does take a little time. Um, it takes a little time to get it all down, so most of you know if you felt it with me for a while. I'm never in a rush when I'm felting by myself. When I felt with you, it's more like a speed session than how I felt when I'm on my own. When I'm on my own, this would take me two evenings, and I felt for... I don't know, maybe an hour at a time because I'm always, you know, pausing to do something or work on something, check on something, take care of my grandpa dog. Um, but this for me would be at least a two evening project um, to do and get it all done. Okay, so you get the idea of the door. Let's get some of this framing in here. You see this ready orange. Sometimes it can help um, to start with the orangest bit. And so I've just blended here pale peach and hot orange. So I just have a big chunk, uh, hot orange here. 
Red grapefruit would well work. I might have used red grapefruit, as a matter of fact, now that I look at that. Red grapefruit, this is what I use. So hot orange or red grapefruit, something really strong. Blend these together and let it be chunky. You don't need it fully blended because look at that woodwork. You want it to look like it's been painted and worn off and painted and worn off. So if you use this first blend here on the outer rim, that's what we'll do right here. I'm going to keep watching for your questions. <laughs> I see the ocean breeze and the salt air. Diana, I'm with you. I felt that just watching that. I totally felt it. I was like, man, we got to go. I was trying to get us some video clips, but honestly, they were so short, they weren't worth the, the cost. <laughs> they, were so, they were expensive, and they were like 20 seconds each. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But a few photographs, we can share those. And those are free, so if you guys are looking, those pictures that I shared for you were free. Um, I either got them off Pexels or Pixabay. Um, so check those out for copyright free um, imagery. And notice how we didn't really have to fuss over that to get that nice straight line. But I want you to look here on the image. So inside here we have a shadow, and on the outside it's not a shadow. So this is the line we're doing right here, right down the, uh, this, this right here is the front of the doorway and this is the inside of the doorway. So here we go. And I want to get that one in first and then we're going to get the, the shadow in. Um, so uh, Sue says the sea and the sky in those images were like they are there in Devon. I would love to see that. That sounds amazing. Um, VG Bedane says, do you shy away from pictures with a lot of v detail? Vicki, I don't really, but for these little tutorials, I think it's a little more of a challenge um, to get in a ton of detail, uh, you know, on something like this. But I guess the best example I have of something that I think does have a lot of detail would be our um, needle felting a dog portrait on YouTube where I spend 45 minutes needle felting one eyeball. <laughs> That's just when it gets to detail, you've got to be willing to put in the time. Okay, so check this out. We've got this mixture here and then let's take our, uh, we can take our blue mixture right here. Let's just put a drop, not a 50-50, maybe 25% of the blue into this orange and see how we like it for our doorway. Oh, I think we need more than 25%. We're going to use this for the shadows on our doorway. So you don't have to add gray. You can add blue and see how you like that for getting your shadows in place. So it's just going to tint that doorway a little bit to the darker. And I think I want to add a touch more in there. And I think that if you're, you know, if you're new to doing 2D or you like 2D, it's good to kind of cut your teeth on some things that are a little more simple, um, maybe feel a little less intimidated. But if you want to go for the detail, the truth is, um, some of you know this, uh, a few years ago was the first time I ever tried to needle felt something realistic. It's, it's, it's a little more than a few years ago now, honestly. My life moves fast. But um, a few years ago, I tried to do something realistic for the first time and I was kind of shy to do that I just did it on my own and I was really pleasantly surprised but what I learned was that it was possible if I was willing and by willing I mean you know to spend the time one to, to do it and two to be a real student of what I was looking at so I think that that's part of the equation is you have to be willing to apply yourself and willing to look deep and see, you know, become a student and realize what you're looking at. And I realized that I had never really practiced that. And it was a good realization for me. It was good to kind of come to grips with that and get one, get over my fear by doing it. And then two, realize what it takes to get to that point. What does it take to be able to do that? And it's practice. It's practice. It's learning to train your eye. So I'm coming off the doorway here and um, 
the one thing I want to add is you see some you see some blue here and obviously I need to bring this dark blue down a little bit further but just look for these little um, lines of color in the image you see as we trace out this doorway and I'm going to add a little a little bit more in there um, Lori Harper says uh, love Santorini, been there several times on cruise stops years ago. The whites and blues in the sun. Ah, blue as wool takes me back. Oh, that's so sweet. Yes, it is just a dream place for me. Let's look here. Jude says her question was cut in half. She struggles to save or maintain the outline in the middle of the door. Any tips on how to save it from just disappearing? Yeah, and mine has kind of disappeared because my wool is so thick. And I've, not thick, but I haven't tacked all my wool down. So here, let's do this. Um, one thing you can do, Jude, one, you could put it back. So like mine has kind of disappeared because I brought a lot more darks into this door than I brought into this, to this one here. So one thing you can do is put it back. And the other thing you can do is fold over um, when you get to a line that you want to save. So just like we did here, you can fold the wool back in and not lose that outline. And you can also put it in last. So I had put it in first and I've piled my wool on a little thick. I'll tell you truthfully, it's a little different when I'm here with you than when I'm at home. When I'm at home, I'm really up close and personal to my piece. And when I'm with you, I'm constantly looking back and forth to the comments. So my needle felting is a bit more sloppy <laughs> when we're live than when I'm doing it by myself. So I would say you could go back and just put it back just like that, just tuck it back in there. Now keep in mind, this picture is gonna kind of be framed like this, so we're not even gonna see all the stuff that I put in there. And add as much detail back to that door as you want. Well, I wanna jump over here for a moment. I'm gonna get off this and jump over here to the sidewalk. And over here on the sidewalk, what you see is a shadow. Uh, let me bring the picture, the real picture. Oh, let me just pull this picture up. So what you see over here is a shadow. Um, right along the side of the wall and I didn't make mine overly strong on um, my felted version I just gave it sort of the hint of it so this is kind of how I did that this is pale peach and like I said you can also use peachy if you see it a little bit um, more strongly and you can start with the pale peach just all by itself um, down here, there are some architectural elements, but the sidewalk goes right like all the way down to here. And so I'm going to just, and this is wall, from here up is wall. So I'm just going to kind of pull this to a point here and needle felt it in place. And in this case, I actually am going to just fill this entire sidewalk in with pale peach and I'm actually going to go back and add the detail to it. So we're just going to start with a base of pale peach right here. And the reason I don't use my cla the um, clover punch tool, I call it the clacking tool, but the clover five needle tool is because you can't really control where the wool is going, you know, at that point. But if you have a big surface area, that's where it would be good for. And right here, this is the line of my building. <laughs> um, let's see. Lynn White says, how, how do I judge how much fiber to pull off and work with at a time? My stuff is either too thin or too skimpy. Lynn, that is such a great question and thank you for asking that. Now when it comes to the MC1, I wanted to show folks who aren't familiar with it. Um, so the, all these little bits that I have here are things that I've pulled off larger bats. And um, so I want to say that for the most part, you want to not be able to see the substrate below, like that's a little thin there. So I would put on another little thin layer. But I want to show y'all that when you're working with these MC1 bats, um, how thinly you can pull it off. And I'm going to do that right after we get this base layer of sidewalk in place. So check this out. Here we have the base layer. And we just kind of have it going on in place. Now, again, uh, someone asked, do I always use blues or sometimes do I use grays? 
yes, I use grays, but sometimes gray is not really the color. Sometimes what you see actually is more of a blue. Like, look at this picture. That is, that translates to me as a blue shadow. And that looks more natural than if I sort of took color away with a gray. That felt more natural to me. So when you're looking at doing these shadows, um, again, what I like to do is take the, take the blend, and in this case I'm using the blue and the white blend, and I'm going to blend it with the pale peach. And here we're going to make our big shadow. So just find your way. And this is going to translate a little bit for Lynn's uh, question of how much to put. So this is a layer on top of a layer. And so we want to see what is underneath there. We want to be able to see what's happening underneath there. Now, thank you all for being here with me. I appreciate all of your questions. I feel like it helps me immensely. Okay, so this is a nice shadow. It may not be quite as dark as that one, but let's go with it anyway. And what we can do is just, it kind of trails down here, and then what we can do is pull it so it's really thin. I'm gonna pull out anything that's just too strong, and we can pull it so that it's really thin and just lays right on top of what we have. It's fine to see a little bit of what was underneath there, and you could go darker with it if you want. This is a lighter version, this is a darker version. I think they both look really nice and both add to the picture that we have going on here and you can needle felt that right down. Now this sidewalk had a lot of little clumps and clusters in it like stone, uh, colored stones. So to put those in, I just had a little fun with it and we won't have a lot of time to do that. But what I did was I took some of my colors that I have here and I just cut some little tiny bits, some little bits and bobs, and not too many. I didn't try to overdo it. Um, I didn't, I wasn't trying, I guess, to exactly replicate the sidewalk that you see, but I wanted an essence of some colored stones in there. And so I just made some little tiny blips happening. And this might be something that you would consider, and you don't have to either. And then I just added some other colors. So this is the pecan, just getting some browns in there. And we're going to put some of this over the top too, just to dirty it up a little bit. Um, and I think I even put some greens in there. But you get the idea. And then what's fun about this is if it seems too strong, we're just going to tack them down. You can always just put another thin, thin layer. And you don't want them to look too orderly move them around. You don't want them to look too poised. You could also just plunk off some little bits, like here's some green. Um, here's some green bits. Just kind of get them down. The sidewalk's not perfect. It's not a pristine white. And then if you feel like things are too close together, um, scoot them up and then tack them down. Now, what you can do once you have that in place is take a little bit more. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of my pale peach and I'm actually even gonna take a tiny bit of this pecan, a tiny bit, and I'm gonna put these two together. And we're just gonna create sort of a little, like a little ruddy blanket right over the top of this and just tone the whole thing down. Just make it look a little more muted. So. You can just kind of see those under there, and they're not quite sitting right on top. And you might not want to cover it up so much, but I'm going to put my shadow back in. The only thing is I'm going to add, I'm going to add a pinch more to this shadow and make it just a little bit darker. And look for your questions. Um, okay. 
So some questions are coming up about what am I going to do when it's finished. And I was thinking maybe we could uh, look at a few things uh, when we're done with these postcards. But I think I'm, I might just, depending on how many I make, it might make a cute little display together. So I'm probably going to frame them. And we do have a video on matting and framing your work on YouTube. And if you look for how to mount, I think it's how to mount and frame your fiber artwork, you can look for that on YouTube. and. Um, we, we give you a few different options for that, but these I think I would just frame in some real simple frames uh, behind glass. Okay, so this is kind of just dirtied up my sidewalk a little bit, and that's really what I wanted to do. I didn't want it to look too pristine. I didn't want it to look too perfect, and um, I just wanted it to have some character. So you can see a little bit those guys underneath, and anything you want to add to make it pop back up you can add it back on top. There's no, nothing wrong with having more layers. You just don't want it to be too, too thick. So let me tack this down and then I'm gonna show y'all how we can peel thin layers of the fiber for use in your projects. Um, is that frame a standard size or did you cut it yourself? No, I, it's just a standard size. I just buy them at the craft store or at Dick Blick or whatever. I just buy my, my mat somewhere. I need to get some actually. So it's just a standard, it's just a standard mat. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of, it's kind of fun to check the project, the process of your process of your piece and make sure your shadows get all the way over here to the sidewalk. Okay, so I know we're, we're coming up on an hour and we still have, we still have a good piece to tackle, but let's look, at the, let's look at the blues and the whites that we see right here. So again, I'm still working with my, my cotton white, not my bright white, and I'm basically going to add blue to this instead of add white to that. So I want to take this and just give it a little bit of shadow. So Mary Adams says, did you add felt to the white section or did you just leave it? Mary, I did add, I did add white and it doesn't add a huge effect. I mean, this white, our cotton white and this white felt are both natural whites. Uh, we often refer to it as ecru. So um, I did add it. It doesn't make a huge uh, impact on the color, but um, I did put wool there, yes. And so that's why I'm kind of skipping that right now. So at very least, we get to all the colored bits. So this could use just a pinch more blue. We want this to have a little bit of shadow on the sides of the walls. Once your picture is all done, maybe the punch tool would be good to even out the entire piece. Yeah, Paula, you can. I tend to really act when I'm doing it by myself is I needle felt every little section. Um, so I might start in draft, but I'm going to needle felt every section. But you certainly can. And Stephanie says it's her 40th birthday. Congratulations. Happy birthday, Stephanie. And her husband got her a gift certificate to Living Felt. That is so sweet. Thank you. Anne Franklin said these postcards are not only great uh, felting lessons, but art lessons too. That's sweet. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to put this guy right here along this wall. And I think it's fun starting to see, you know, when you break the picture down into these little sections, you can start to see these characteristics. It's um, much better than just laying down all that white and then going back and trying to find your way. So by doing the lines in the photos, you can really start to see what's happening in there. Um, and it just becomes like a little coloring book, really. So if that blue is right there along that part of the wall, then you know what, you can go ahead and put your straight cotton white right on top. Now in the original photo and in mine too, right here, I went back right here along this line and I'm adding just a pinch of this pecan, very narrow, very narrow just to it's a little more orangey in the photograph, but I don't think you have to, you know, follow that exactly. Um, and if this line seems too long, one trick, I mean too strong, one trick you can do to mute it is just to needle felt it further into the background 
or if you haven't needle felted this down all the way, you can just kind of tuck it a little over the top and then it'll mute it a little bit. So now we've defined that line a little better and we can put straight white, and again, I'm just using cotton white, right on top of the wall. Now this wall wraps all the way around um, and you want to go ahead and capture that and in the photo, yeah, the, the variations are greater, but go ahead and wrap it around so that when we add, there's some foliage under here. When we add that, this it will just go right on top of it. And then just bend this, just bend it where you want it. Drag it and bend it. And so the MC1 is really is nice to work with for a project like this. And if you haven't worked with it before, give it a try. Um, just this year, as a result of COVID, one good thing out of COVID is we started offering it in smaller increments. Previously, you could only get it in two ounces or larger unless you bought a studio pack, and now we offer it in as small as a half ounce. So you might check it out, um, even if you just try a color or two and see how you like it. So I am rushing this a tiny bit, but let's jump over here and get our door frame in place and um, see what other questions you all have. Oh, thank you. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> Is there a really light sky blue color you recommend? We have some really nice ones. I really like winter blue and you could lighten that too if you want. Uh, Robin's egg is gorgeous as well, so you might try those. Um, they're, they're blends, they're not, uh, they're not a solid, but you might, you might try those in the MC1. Oh, uh, Karen says, how often do I pull my piece up off the pad? You know, Karen, because I'm using fine needles, I don't. I don't pull it up until I'm done. I won't pull this piece up until I'm finished, so. There's no reason to if you're using a fine needle because you'll see I'm not hurting my foam at all. If you're using a more aggressive needle like a 38 star, then you're likely you're really embedding the fiber into your foam. But again, um, this is all the wool that's coming through the backside, so I'm not damaging my foam. Therefore, I don't need to pick it up. And that's definitely something to consider. You can get you know, this wool on here, good, smooth, and flat without using an overly aggressive needle. You absolutely can. So now under here, I'm gonna add just a little bit more under this archway. And I just encourage y'all to, you know, have fun, have fun with this. You might pick a p completely different picture. You're welcome to do this picture. Maybe you'll change this picture up. Um, and try try to do do something different with it than I have done and to me that's just fun I love seeing what you all do and what you all make from these projects I'm I am always in admiration but not in surprise because you all are so talented and creative and my goal always is that you just find this these projects as a lifting off point uh, to do your own art because you all are such talented artists and I'm a, you know, I'm just a girl who likes to play with wool. <laughs> a girl. You could still be a girl at my age. Um, and I just appreciate the time to hang out with you all and uh, felt some stuff together. So as we felt these projects, it would be fun to know maybe like somewhere else you would like to go if we want to go somewhere else on our on our little uh, virtual vacations. I thought that maybe um, besides postcards, we could also make some souvenirs. And I, I do have some things in mind, but you are welcome to make some suggestions. And they'll be a lot easier to read if you make your suggestions in the comments down below after the video airs. It's kind of easier to scroll through those comments and suggestions there than to um, do it here. So now I'm going to fill all of this in with white. And since I know to you that that doesn't, that doesn't look much different than this, let me jump to an area that does, that's going to look slightly different, like right here. This is just a little bit, has a little bit of color, so I'm going to take my pale peach and my cotton white and put those two guys together for this area right here. And this is a little terrace right here, but I like that it's just a suggestion of a terrace, so it's kind of fun that you can just kind of plop some pillows and an umbrella there without being overly detailed. And so this is very light 
but it's not white and it's not the color of the sidewalk and um, it's going to make the it's going to show you that there is corners and turns in these walls and it's not just one big flat wall now I'm going to put that in and you can go back and add the detail on your terrace very quickly and very easily the umbrella does add some interest and if you're not able to see how I just pulled that off remember just to hold it down so that it doesn't rip off and see how this wool is sticking over just fold it back over so where we were talking maybe it was Karen or Jude a minute ago says how do I not use lose that line fold it back over in on itself and needle felt it flat that way okay we're going to cruise along. How are we doing? So we're, we're using up, I mean not using up, but our, our time is doing okay. If you guys are feeling okay, let me know you're doing okay. And I'm going to muscle through this a little bit. Um, so Audrey says, can a variety of fibers be used short and long? Absolutely, Audrey. Have fun. You know, do what makes sense to you. Um, for me, I needle felt a lot with MC1, but you can use whatever you want. I'm going to put a few lines in my sidewalk here just to show that it is got some steps in it. And what I know, and I'm just dragging the pecan across. But what I noticed is there were some dark lines uh, and some white lines on the opposite side of that. It was sort of like the corner. But notice also that they're going to get a little that's the wall right there they're going to get a little closer together as you get further away that's the one little bit of perspective they're going to get closer together as you get further away and then I'm just going to darken this very little end down here you can go one more because you can kind of it's just going to get a little bit less clear and this is just all architectural stuff down here bushes and more walls and and things like that so for this over here these orangey bits then I took my mandarin and my pale peach again and blended those together so that we don't just have one thing going on I blended these together and then just added in a few doors uh, a few doors down there and some bushes okay let's see is the fiber really short or are you ripping it? Tori, the fiber is really short. So Tori, here is, here is the, the wool as it stands and I can pull off even smaller than that. It's, it's very, very, very short. Um, so that's the magic of the MC1 is that it's very short and that allows for a really great blend. So I am not ripping the fiber. You'll know if you are because it'll really start to pill up on you. So I'm not tearing it. It's very short. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of get these architectural elements in here, but I'm going to have a little rounded bit. So just find your way with that. If you didn't, you know, if your water, you want it to go over your water so that it looks interesting, use your finger, make it go where you want, and then just kind of tack it down. Um, Jane Hall says, doesn't adding the off-white wool to the building structure give you the stucco look you're needing here rather than just leaving the background felt? Jane, mine has wool in it. I'm just not doing it at this moment because I'm jumping ahead. Yes, I add my white wool here. Add white wool here, add white wool here. And I even put a little CX2 right on top. So just for the essence of time and knowing some people could leave, I'm saving that part for last. But mine has white wool, I wouldn't leave it bare. Not me, I wouldn't. Some people might, but I wouldn't. Okay, should the entire postcard be even and flat? Christine asks. Christine, if you want it even and flat, make it even and flat, I do. I like mine nice and even and flat. Some people may want to give theirs dimension. And as I said, we'll do an image with a little more dimension later on. We'll get to that. We'll, we'll do one, because why not? So I'm just adding some more color down here, and then we're going to come back, and this is like a, more buildings. These, what's so great about this place is that, you know, there's so many uh, houses and stores and everything built on the hillside, which was actually created from the eruption of a volcano, as I understand it, and that volcano is underground, and I think it last erupted 3,600 years ago, or under the water, not underground, it's under the water, erupted. 3,600 years ago. It's just amazing. So this is all has created this landscape um, as a result of that. 
it's phenomenal okay so now when you get in here you know you can't really see what everything is so you can just plunk some bushes in there and add light green and add some dark green to it as well so it's not just one thing and this little bit here is actually a painted patio lots of color um, there white and color which I think is just beautiful and these do not have to be overly detailed you just kind of have some you just kind of have something happening there and you could put another pinch on top if you want to break up that dark green and we're gonna do the same thing down here now uh, what we have down here is just a painted wall this is an orange wall right here you can make up your own you can change the image there were actually two really bright green trash cans <laughs> in this photograph which I decided not to include um, but you could put them in if you want <laughs> and then um, I'll put these little bushes in here and see what else you have to say. Now, I'm sorry if I've missed any questions. I hope, oh, y'all are just amazing. So I'm getting a slew of questions that I know it takes me forever to answer them. But if I've missed your question and you feel like it was really important, please post it in the comments down below after the video because Lord knows I go back and read all of those. And um, Mike uh, oh, Susie Kohler says shading and, and shadows are my downfall and Susie I would say if you're willing to just sort of break up your picture like this into these little elements that you might find it's just it's just a little bit easier it can be just a little bit easier if you break it into these segments so let's um, I'm going to jump these pillows drop these pillows in here and then see what else you all have to say and uh, see if we can wrap up our little picture of Santorini. I will get some white on these walls so you guys don't feel like I've skipped that part. But notice that you can just drop down the yellow on the pillows and then come back with a little bit of, a little bit of color. You don't have to be overly, mm, let's see, exact. And that was my goal with this piece, that you didn't feel like you had to overthink it, think about it too much, that we could go for the essence of uh, watercolor. Watercolors are often very soft and just a suggestion, um, uh, just a gentle um, rendering of a space in time. And I kind of wanted this project to feel like that too. So with my umbrella, I'm going to put some, just a little cone, if you will, of white right here. I, I just grabbed my CX2 for this one, because why not? And I'm going to stab it into a point. You can twirl the loose ends right there. And I don't know, how big do you want it to be? You can just pull it off and find your way. And then again, we can fold up the bottom so that it goes where you want it. So you can say, well, my umbrella is going to end right about there. And then you can just fold up all the rest right on top of itself and give yourself a nice straight line. Maybe you want it taller, whatever you decide. Just a happy little umbrella hanging out on the patio. And I'm going to just pick a blue and give us a straight little blue line right down there. Spend as much time or as little time as you want, you know, making that little bit come to life. And then I put just a little bit of blue down here on the patio so that you can see that it has a floor, just like that. Okay, let's get some white on these walls so y'all don't feel like I left you. I left you bare. Uh, Teresa Dudick says, what size did you cut your fabric to start with? Teresa, this is just a half sheet. So the images that we're giving you for the postcard are four by six. And so we just cut the wool felt sheet right in half. Okay, so here is my here's my cotton white, all right? On cotton white, you're not gonna feel like it has it adds much um, it makes much difference on this wall, but that's okay. Just get it in there anyway. And if you have any wool that you just really don't want where it is, you can you can cut it with your scissors or you can bury it just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna get my cotton white right in here on this wall. And just fill it in, fill it in and guide it. Um, 
<laughs> so Patricia asked, do you iron it after? Yes, I iron it after. I brought my iron for you today. Um, my This one is not quite fat. So look, notice how I just put it in there and then you can, you sort of tear it off to shape and then just guide the wool to go where you want it. So um, Lynn had mentioned before, how much do I pull off? And I just pull off enough that I know I'm gonna have a solid cover. I promised to tear a layer for you, so let me do that. And so this does add, it actually is a little bit darker, uh, it's a little more mm, aged looking than the felt itself, which I don't mind. But if you prefer, you could use the CX2 bright white, which is super duper bright white. Okay, so now here where this is extra, you can just put your finger there and tear it off. If your fibers are particularly long, that might be difficult, so it might be easier for you to cut them. But notice that I needle felt then on the line, and then I can just fold this back up onto the wall. And then you're just gonna needle felt all of that flat. If you want to put some bright white, this is the CX2, right on top of that, you know, you might, you might find that you like how the light catches it, or you might like the bright white up here where it's getting more sun. Why don't I do that, just for fun. Now this is more wiry um, than, like I said, it's more wiry and it's more brittle than MC1, so you are going to notice a difference. They're not the same breed. MC1, for those of you who don't know, is our, it's living felt fiber. Nobody else carries it unless they put it in their kits, and some people do that. They really like to use it in their needle felting kits. Um, and I know that someone answered for the group last week and said, it is merino batting and living felt calls it MC1. And that's almost accurate, but it is a merino cross batting. The sheep are all USA domestic sheep. Um, it's not the same as our 100% merino wool batting. It's different. Ours is about 25 micron. Sometimes you're going to find it's finer than 25 micron. Um, you'll just feel it and feel that it's like an extra soft batch. It all needle felts beautifully. It actually wet felts beautifully. But MC1 is a living felt fiber and it is a, a USA domestic fiber. Now, right up here on the, the top of this guy, we have one more little Eve uh, that I used my blue with. And um, that is just the, I don't know if it's really an Eve, but it's an end of the roof line there. And we can get it into place just like that. Now I did have one more shadow line and y'all probably don't even care, but I did use dusty blue and it's the only place I use dusty blue on my entire picture. And um, it is right here. See that little part in the door right there? Just It just adds a little more dimension and it's a little mo bit more of a division. So I use dusty blue right there. And notice that you can just kind of coax it off and put it into place. Now there's a few more things to do, but I encourage you to sit and noodle and have fun with yours, adding all of those little detail elements. And remember to get out your little frame and see how, how are you guys liking it so far. Do you, do you like what we've done together? Does this look like a fun picture? Uh, might you make your own? I hope that you'll leave comments down below. This right here is a little light fixture, which I didn't get overly detailed with, but I did uh, fill this in with the same cotton white, and then I added that little design element. So fill that in if you want, but let's jump to this picture, and let me turn on my iron right now, and I'm going to answer a few questions that you all have on yeah. that. So I'll let you look at that for the moment while I prep our iron uh, for what we have. Okay. So one question I see 
is from Linda. She says, does the ironing blossom the needle felting holes? I try with lots of steam and it seemed to. So um, maybe you mean, does it kind of smooth them out? I tell you what, I'll jump to this picture right here because this one needs to be flattened in my opinion and needs to be needle felted more. Um, so let me jump to the one that's fully finished and we will iron that one. Um, and I, I think that you're going to see less holes if you use a fine needle. You'll also see less holes if your base is nice and flattened. Oh, I'll peel this off for you so that y'all can see. Um, but then yes, the ironing will help as well. So notice that we did not destroy our foam at all. And that is all the wool that came through to the opposite side because we used our fine needles. Now, I'm going to needle felt this all flat before I iron mine, uh, before I finish ironing it. But one more glimpse, this is what we did together today. I'm going to go home and finish working on mine and get all those little details into place. So I'm super happy with them. Like I see this big chunk of blue here. And what I'm going to do is bring this blue over so that it matches this side a little more evenly and a little more exactly. That's what I'm, I'm going to change. But let's iron this guy. So with my iron on steam, I have it turned up all the way. I'm ironing onto 100% wool felt back here. I just use that as my back because uh, I like to iron on it. And you can iron right on your piece. There you go. Now, I'm going to let you see this up very close. Very, very, very close. See if the camera will focus. It might, it might not like me being all that close. But I think you can see, uh, let's see, it doesn't like me being all that close. Let me see if I can zoom it in instead. Let's tell it what to do. Here we go. I'll get you right into the sky. Now, that's probably about as close as you want to look at this thing without feeling too nauseous. But what you'll see is, you know, normally when you look at a picture like this, really you're viewing it from a stood black place. You're viewing it from maybe it's on a mantle or a desk or a shelf on the wall and no one's expecting it that close. But even up close, you couldn't see the needle marks. And I want to tell you that a lot of that has to do more with using the fine needle in the first place, needle felting everything flat and smooth on top of that. And that is really going to prevent you from having a whole bunch of needle marks. So remember to grab the PDF, it, the link to it. We'll clean up the description. It's just one big block of text right now, but we'll clean it up. The link is in there so that you can download this on our website. You're going to get the images on there and feel free to zoom in on the digital versions of the image so that you can see them super up close and personal. And I just want to thank you all so much for your questions. Um, Jennifer says, could you glue this to a back and mount it to a card? How would you finish it? Yes, Jennifer, you can. You can glue it to something Y'all check out the mounting and framing uh, video and um, you could, you know, you could felt it, I mean you could adhere it to a very thick back like Pellon or you could glue it to a cardstock or you can just cut it and frame it behind glass. So there's a few different options and our mounting and framing video, I'll link to it in the description down below so you can consider a few different things you might uh, do with your felt pieces to finish them off. Um, Jane Hall says, which heat setting? Jane, I just turn mine all the way up. When I iron, when it's just the wool, I turn it all the way up. And mine is um, to linen cotton is, oh, no, to, yeah, to um, whatever's the hottest setting is what I turn mine up to when I do this. If you have um, fibers like silk fibers, they can tend to dull if your setting is too hot. So only turn it up to silk because you don't want to burn off the sheen of silk or uh, viscose or some or something like that. Okay, so just a few more questions. Thank you all so much. I'm so glad that you like it. Oh, good. So what I'd like you to do is think about what else, maybe where else you would like to visit during our virtual vacations. Would you like to do some souvenirs or more 2D? Both are okay. I have more felting projects in mind for you than we have weeks in the year, I promise. And um, okay, good. So now before we go, I mentioned to you all that where we hang out a lot is 
is in our Facebook group and I brought just a quickie little slideshow for you that I wanted to share some of the photos in our group and then I am going to read you uh, the names of people who made these amazing pieces and I want you to know this is just like a fraction of what happens in like a week or a week's time so many beautiful photos and projects and such a great variety so this one is Chantal uh, Carazales she happens to be a Texas gal right here just a beautiful Yoda this is Ashley Metzen and she's just learning to needle felt dolls I know she took our doll tutorial that's Claire Long we did the poppies tutorial a few weeks back this is Irene Clark. She is just making some amazing floral shawls. Jennifer Harkins did this gorgeous butterfly on linen, by the way. That's Linda Petropoulos. So there's a Greek name for you. She used our MC1 batting. Norma Medina did the Lavender Fields project from last week. And there's another version. Pat Ackerman did her own version of the Lavender Fields. This is Patty Boy. Just a lovely pet portrait there. And this is Shannon Alcott, who shared the steps and her inspiration photo. And then we're back to that. So I just wanted to share a, just a glimpse of what happens in our Facebook group each week. Um, so I hope you guys will consider joining. You, If you're not into Facebook, then tag us on Instagram. Let us know. Show your projects with us so we can see them as well. I haven't been as active as I'd like to be the last few weeks, but we're kind of catching up to ourselves. And all the supplies that we're sharing are from our shop, uh, Living felt.com right there so y'all grab the PDF now I have brought the fairies brought in some names so we're gonna give away prizes and today's winners did I get one okay so today you get to choose an MC1 studio pack in the colorway of your choice we have these by color family we have some seasonal thematic packs as well so they've given me some names to pull from I'm gonna draw two names if your name is not drawn or if your question was not answered Please leave a comment down below after the live show and we will, well one jumped out so I have to choose that one. Um, we will draw two more names next week. Now before I go on, I want to say thank you sincerely from all of us to everyone who left us a Google review this week. For the first time in our 16 years of business, we asked for reviews. Not loaded, not gifted, not win a prize. We just asked if you would please leave us a Google review if you've benefited from our tutorials or our free PDF downloads or maybe you've shopped with us or whatever. And so many of you came out and did that and for everyone I thank you so much um, so yeah if you want to leave us a Google review we're grateful our winners today are Carrie Jones congratulations Carrie I know the cameras are super bright and Sue Carson congratulations gals you can choose one of our MC1 studio packs for your very own if you would use the contact us page on our website just scroll to the bottom click contact us and let us know which one you would like in the meantime I hope you guys have super fun. I hope you'll check out this project for needle felting. Our little travel postcard to Santorini. I hope that you'll consider hitting the subscribe button and click the bell to get notified every time we upload a new video or go live. In the meantime, I'm Marie with Living Felt and from all of us, we just thank you so, so much for joining us. I hope to see you in the group this week. Bye y'all. Thank you.